John, I want to talk short term first of all, and that is, as we always talk about, the banks, the liquidity there. What is the latest on that? Uh, what will happen if they, if and when they reopen? Well, you were quite right to point out that the banks are the Achilles heel in this entire process, and they could take the uh, control of the speed of this process out of the hands of the institutions negotiating in Brussels if they should fail sooner than expected. The ECB says the European Central Bank is uh, monitoring the liquidity of the banking system very closely, uh, but it is well aware that banks right now are living hand to mouth. The reports we're hearing from people working in the banking system is that they are literally, uh, the money that they're taking in each day from uh, payroll or from other lump payments between businesses uh, is going into ATMs to be dispersed the next day. And, and that is how they are proceeding from one day to the next. Uh, they, are, they believe that they have cash to keep going until Wednesday, possibly Thursday, but only under the capital controls regime. Uh, and it's unclear what would happen beyond that point if there weren't a resolution in Brussels and the European Central Bank decided not to release further liquidity assistance. I think opening uh, on a normal basis would then be impossible for them. But what the situation would be, what sort of a regime they would go to, is very difficult to predict right now. I think that uh, they would have to have some sort of very limited operation that would enable businesses to trade because that's the part of the economy that's really suffering from the cash flow crunch. Okay, and then we have to talk long term as well, John, because as I outlined just before we came to you, all these talks that are happening, the emergency summits and, and these sorts of things. Let's look at it from the Greek perspective, I guess. What do that's they have right. to take to Europe? Well, I think that given the shortness of time, in order to arrive at an agreement that serves at least as an interim agreement, one that releases some bailout funds to the Greeks between 7 and 15 billion euros to see them through the end of the year. Don't forget, they've got to pay two European Central Bank bonds this month and next, uh, both together worth about 6.5 billion euros. Uh, an agreement even of that limited nature uh, would, uh, would at least relieve right now the pressure uh, that's uh, on all sides regarding the possibility of a Greek exit from the Eurozone. Once that was kicked uh, several months down the road uh, on the basis of reasonable proposals from both sides, I think there would then have to be a fuller meeting later on in the year for the so-called third Greek bailout. Because as the International Monetary Fund has pointed out, uh, Greece is going to now need at least 50 uh, billion euros in additional funding over the next two years. Now, uh, to get to that point, to get to this interim agreement this week, you've got to have an agreement of attitudes on both sides. And just how far apart the Greeks and the creditors may be is indicated by two front pages in today's Greek press. This is an austerity-friendly newspaper showing the party leaders meeting yesterday to hammer out a national position. The title here is, This is the Summit that May Decide Grexit. Mm. That is how grave things look to the campaign that voted yes to austerity measures last Sunday. This newspaper is the official mouthpiece of the ruling left-wing Syriza party, and it says the ball is now in the creditors' court, considering that Greece has nothing more to say after that big no to further austerity. This, of course, is also very far from the truth. Greeks do have to sit down and talk about things that will be painful. And I think most people here are aware of that, Kamal. Most people have said to me, we've got difficulties ahead whichever way we, we vote. Thank you, John Soropoulos, for that update on the Greek situation from Athens.